Hello, and welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. I'm your host, Kamaria Richmond, and we have another wonderful show for you today. We are talking to Chris Stevenson, and we have a lot to talk about. He is a legislative and community liaison for Prince George's County. It's a lot to get that out. Chris, <laughs> welcome to the Ed Brown Show. <laughs> thank you, thank you, I understand. Thank you for having well, me. Well, it's I'm glad to have you here because you have an impressive background. And so let's start. You just graduated. I did. In June, I believe. In May. In May. May. Mm -hmm. And so tell us about that process because you did a lot at George Washington. Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay. All righty. So I started uh, my master's program in mm -hmm. public administration at the George Washington University in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, it was a two-year program and it ended uh, this past May. Uh, during the time that I was there, I recently, you know, experienced different challenges and obstacles. Um, I say that because uh, during, before that time, I was actually on dialysis. Uh, mm -hmm. So I suffered from kidney failure. And miraculously, uh, one of my fraternity brothers uh, was actually very helpful in assisting me and actually donated a kidney to me uh, during that time. Wow. So I, I felt very grateful, but I, I was in school full time. Mm -hmm. um, I got my kidney transplant on October 9, 2017. Uh, so I'll never forget that date. Uh, but I was in school full time, and I was also uh, attempting to start a minority leadership program. Uh, so uh, I was basically talking to the director, uh, mm -hmm. talking to different students on campus about basically forming a program that assists minority students uh, with leadership capabilities, mm -hmm. mentorship aspects of that type of program, and so forth, in order uh, to gear them, prepare them for the opportunities that await after graduation in the public sector, the private sector, mm -hmm. government, and um, other sectors as well. So it's been some, it's been a ride. Wow, <laughs> wow, that is impressive. So I want to talk more, and we have a second segment, so we can talk more about what you're going to do for Prince George's County. Mm -hmm. But in the current role, well, in that when you were doing that, mm -hmm. how was it with young people? How was it reaching out to young people? Well, I think, you know, the George Washington University, it fosters an environment where people want to learn, people want to grow. Mm -hmm. um, the students at the Trachtenberg School, um, everyone wants to kind of reach up and, and grab that next opportunity in their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, so it wasn't difficult. Um, the, the school actually has other similar programs in place, but none of the, none of the programs really concentrate on minority students. Mm -hmm. um, at first, you know, going to the George Washington University as an undergraduate student, I noticed, you know, there was a lack of opportunities for, um, you know, people that come from my community. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm both a black and Mexican, uh, so I wanted to ensure that there was something that when people came to Trachtenberg and they were learning about um, the various sectors of government and, and mm -hmm. public policy and public administration that they could latch on to a program that would assist them in that endeavor. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, now that this program has been founded and I chaired it for a year, um, the program is still at the Trachtenberg School. Uh, and it's, it, it, and it's, it's a permanent program, so um, we're seeing a lot of things uh, developing uh, for that program. Well, how did the administration, how did they get on board with that? How did they say, okay, you know what, we think that this is something that's very important, mm -hmm. beneficial for our students. Mm -hmm. Was there any pushback, or mm -hmm. were they just... At first, um, there was a little bit of pushback, but overall mm -hmm. I would say, um, especially the director, Kathy Newcomer, very supportive of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, she viewed it as a tremendous opportunity. Um, there's, like I said, a similar program. There's a women's leadership uh, forum and a program over there that kind of um, is basically uh, the MLP program, the Minority Leadership Program, is kind of modeled a little bit after that program. So. Mm -hmm. It was a program that basically allowed the concentration of minorities to reach these leadership opportunities. Um, when I presented this opportunity or this program to her, she 100% was on board. Uh, she loved the idea. And it was very ironic okay. because I thought about this idea when I, um, during the summer, even before school started. And I met with her early. I went mm -hmm. to uh, Students Accepted Day, even though I already knew what the George Washington was all about. Mm -hmm. I told her about my ideas, and from that conversation, we just uh, started chipping away. Um, you know, we were talking about the makeup of the executive board, mm -hmm. as well as what opportunities the program was actually going to instill and give to the uh, selected cohort members and so forth. So I, I would say, um, the 
you know, the, the overall support was there. I think um, the pushback came when we were referring to or, or started to concentrate on the specifics of the program. Um, at first, you know, some people wanted and, and some students and, and maybe some faculty were concerned about the name. Should we call it a minority leadership program or should mm -hmm. we call it um, maybe a, a program that concentrates on people of color and so forth. So the politics of it mm -hmm. uh, kind of comes into play but overall there was a lot of support for it. And how about from other students? So mm -hmm. you know okay we're going to do this we're going to focus on minorities mm -hmm. but what about the large mass of other students? Right. Um, you know, and it's not even surprisingly, I, I think we have reached a level where uh, no matter if you're a minority or a non-minority, mm -hmm. uh, we know as, as a public, as the public, that minorities um, need opportunities. Uh, what minorities, the issues a lot of minorities face. Um, because of that, I think there was an overwhelming support from both minorities and non-minorities. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of minority students, uh, they came up to me and as well as the director of the school uh, to basically give their opinion about how to create this program, how to make it better, mm -hmm. what the program should um, consist of. And I think that was, uh, that was what was needed because I, even though I was, I thought of the idea and I, and I founded the program, I wanted feedback. I wanted mm -hmm. to know what would you like to see in this program. And I think, you know, when you get um, the opinions of others and their concerns mm -hmm. and their needs and their wants for a program like this, it just makes the program better. I agree. Now tell us the specifics of what you're actually doing. Well, you did it for a year. I did. You know, the specifics of what actually goes through that process. So what, what are like the main obstacles or challenges mm -hmm. or just the main, this is what we're gonna do mm -hmm. every day, every month, right. every year? Right, so there's a lot of logistics that go into okay. play, of course, when, when you start a program like this. Everything from how often you're gonna meet, where mm -hmm. you're gonna meet, how many cohort members are gonna be involved, um, how many mentors are going to be involved. Uh, we, had, we had to make a constitution for the program as well, uh, the objectives as well as the mission for the program. Okay. So it, it's a lot of logistical work that goes into play because you're building, essentially you're building the foundation for the program. Um, so there were a lot of meetings that I had with um, some of my fellow uh, members on the executive board. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, we, we basically panned everything out. We said, if we meet maybe once a month, would it be too, too, too many meetings or would it be, um, uh, would we need more meetings? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, uh, we kind of followed a structure that other programs had at the Trachtenberg School. Uh, we kept in mind that everyone's a graduate student um, that's involved in the program. And we know that the schedules of graduate students, it involves mm -hmm. not only classes, but work. So, some students right. are full-time parents and so forth. So we wanted to accommodate them as best as possible. So we chose to limit the meetings to at least once a month and have optional meetings as well where cohort members could come and, and kind of, we could facilitate an environment where it would be more of a social activity than uh, maybe a, you know, obligated meeting that we planned out um, through our year long um, program plan. Now what was your number one objective? I think my number one objective with this program was to make sure that when minority students came to Trachtenberg, they not only found a resource within this program, but they bonded mm -hmm. with other mi talented minority students as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a program like this kind of allows people to relate to each other to see differences and similarities mm -hmm. in different communities, but also it gives the professional aspect to it as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's needed because no matter what stage in life you're in, you always need a mentor. And right. that's also something that the program provided. It allows you to reach to or have a, a relationship with a, um, an alumni that's in the minority community. Um, and it basically pairs you with them so you can have one-on-ones with them. You can learn about an industry that you want to go into and someone that's you know, older than you or um, has more experience in that field can tell you about it. You can learn more about it. You can ask the hard questions and mm -hmm. so forth. And what about volunteers? So do you have younger students that you reach out to mm -hmm. or is it strictly just for 
college students. So it's strictly for, uh, the cohort is, is strictly for uh, minority Trachtenberg students. Okay. But an initiative that um, the current board is doing right now is reaching to the undergraduate students uh, because mm -hmm. We said that this program can be more than what it is, and and right. you know I I 100% believe in that. Um, I know that when I was an undergrad at the George Washington University, I wish I had mentors that were graduate students that kind of reached down and said, "Hey, you know, if you're thinking about going okay. into this field, let's talk." So right. we we want that um, kind of a three-way mentorship aspect of the program. We have. Mm -hmm. Uh, people that have already graduated from Trachtenberg that we can, you know, they can mentor us mm -hmm. uh, as well as we can mentor undergraduate students. So everyone is kind of being mentored in some type of capacity. Now, why did you choose to do, how did, why did you choose to get into like politics? Was it political science? It, it was. I, I, uh, I, when I attended the George Washington University as an undergraduate, I majored in political science and I just recently got my degree in public administration. So tell us why. <laughs> <laughs> so that is that is the story of the hour. Um, so originally it started really, uh, I would say when I was younger. Okay. Um, my, my dad's a doctor and I at first wanted to go into medicine. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I did everything you could do as a child to, to try to go into that field. Um, I went to a camp at Georgetown University one mm -hmm. summer where, okay. you know, you kind of learned about the medical school process. We saw cadavers and everything. Uh, but I remember it was one summer uh, that uh, I was actually helping my grandmother. My grandmother is very active in the community. Uh, she's, mm -hmm. you know, still to this day my mentor. I count on her. Uh, she raised me as well. Uh, and uh, I remember we were at the Municipal Center in Glen Arden. And it was a community day. So everyone from different elected officials came out um, to people just out in the community that just wanted to be involved. And uh, Congressman Wynn actually came out and his campaign manager came out as well. And uh, his name is Darius White, to this day a really good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And he said, what are you doing this summer? And I was in high school. I, I didn't have really have anything going on. Right. And I said, well, I'm not doing much of anything. And he, he asked me if I wanted to come, um, you know, intern and work for the congressman. And I said, sure. So it, it started from me being involved to that capacity, but there was another major capacity that kind of uh, geared my involvement in the community, I would say. Uh, it was my grandmother's involvement. Uh, my grandmother, she raised me uh, since I was seven years old, and she was always out in the community, always active, uh, active in, in church. Um, at the time, we went to St. Mary's Catholic Church. And I would go with her, of course, and, and she would do um, fundraisers and different social mm -hmm. events for the church groups and so forth. And she was always involved in the Civic Association in my mm -hmm. town as well. So uh, one thing led to another, and I think her being one of my role models, that really had an, a deep effect on me because okay. at the end of the day, she was helping people. And I saw that, I participated in that. So it allowed me to kind of see the impact that that really had on not only herself, but other people, the community at large. Uh, and one thing led to another, and even though I, I had an interest in medicine, I love the aspect of being in politics or being in a political rule, uh, role that you can actually bring about great change. Uh, change that really helps to transform and to bring some type of positive aspect to the community. And we need that. Okay. We definitely need that today. Now, your grandmother, did she focus on minority issues or was it broad? No, it was, it was broad. Okay. I mean, you know, um, I think, you know, going back to the program at GW, I created that program because I feel as though there was a need for it. Uh, okay. But my grandmother, uh, she didn't, she never concentrated on really just minority or helping minorities. She, mm -hmm. She's the type of woman that helps everyone. Anyone that needs help, she's always willing to help. Um, some, sometimes her friends get after her because she helps too much. She's always mm -hmm. spread too thin. But um, she's, always, she's always been the lady that, you know, raises her hand and says, I'll do it. Um, she takes it upon herself to make sure that she's a vehicle uh, of, of change, of help, of mm -hmm. assistance in the community. So uh, I think, you know, being 
raised by her, it just had a great, profound impact on my life. And I, I think, uh, you know, when I have to attribute it to, to someone, it, it's her. That's wonderful. Yeah. There's, there's nothing, nothing like a grandma. Nothing, nothing like a grandma. But did she encourage you to go down this path of political science? You know what? She always wanted me to follow what my heart desired. Okay. Um, she never pushed me a certain way. Um, I was always just very active. Um, if she was sitting here right now, she'd tell you I was always that that kid that you never had to tell to do his homework. Um, she never had to tell me what to do, what the, what the wrong thing to do was, what the right thing to do was. Um, it, it just happened, and, and I think that's how it should happen. I mm -hmm. think it should happen naturally. Um, mm -hmm. It shouldn't be forced upon you to kind of go into a certain direction that you may not be passionate about. Because at the end of the day, I think if you don't really find your passion, um, whatever you're doing in life, you're not going to be that good at it. Um, you're going to be thinking about something else that you either could be doing, that you really want to do. Uh, but fortunately, I was, I was able to kind of find it still at a young age, and um, I think I, I blossomed from that um, in a great way. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. And we'll talk a bit later about your initiatives, but deciding to work in mm -hmm. Prince George's County, mm -hmm. why? You know, um, Half of my family lives in California, and the other half lives in the DMV. A, a big part of that is, a, is in Prince George's County. I always wanted to give back. Um, I have visited California. I, I visit quite frequently. I try to go every other year for Christmas and so forth. Okay. Um, but there's nothing like giving back to the community that raised you. Um, I had different people that guided me when I was younger. Mm -hmm. They gave me advice that helped me along the way. Um, I've seen the troubles of people that go through different problems in Prince George's County. Um, even though, you know, when people say, oh, well, why don't you get involved in maybe California politics or, mm -hmm. or help them? Um, I know the problems of people in Prince George's County. I don't know too much of the problems of people that live in California or in, in Orange County where some of my family lives, uh, but I know the problems of the people in Prince George's County. And I think from a young age, starting to help people just kind of nourished mm -hmm. um, the hunger to do more. Uh, it was a very natural feeling to be able to say or be able to do anything that uh, could help a senior citizen. Um, you know, it, it started around that time when I was young and I, and I was helping other senior citizens, um, you know, in, in, in my church group, um, out in the community. Uh, I remember that when I was in, in I attended the Glen Arden Woods Elementary School, um, and I remember going or being asked to say a speech to uh, veterans at the American Legion that was located near the school. Okay. And I was in the sixth grade, and uh, I remember how after I gave the speech, a lot of senior citizens came up to me and they said, wow, that, that did something to me. Um, you giving that speech, and it was about veterans and, mm -hmm. and the commitment they give to our country and, and how we should be proud of that aspect. It did something to them and it, it really nourished a feeling in me that I was very passionate about, that I was very proud of. Um, that same pride hasn't gone away. If anything, it, it's increased. So. Uh, I'm very passionate about being um, or being raised in Prince George's County mm -hmm. and being able to give back to my county. Um, it's my home at the end of the day, so I always want to give back to my home. And that's important because in this political time that we're in today, mm -hmm. we definitely need people that are committed and people that really support their communities. Mm -hmm. So if you had to say one thing that you really want to focus on in Prince George's County, mm -hmm. what would that be? You know, um, I was diagnosed with diabetes from a very young age, and I also suffered from kidney failure. Um, I was very blessed, like I said, to find a, a donor mm -hmm. um, who's, you know, my fraternity brother at that. Um, but I, I think because of the experiences that I've had and, and the knowledge that I know about the problems of, of, of people that um, live in the county, I think I would just like to concentrate on health care issues. Uh, maybe not just health care issues, but health care issues is, is a top issue for me. 
um, you know, that that goes or stems from any, anything from the lack of grocery stores that we have in the county uh, to making sure that we have resources that are accessible uh, to young, middle age, um, our senior citizens, and so forth. Right, right, and those are definitely, those folks that we really need to reach out to are typically those with a disability, right. those that are aging, those don't, just don't have access right. to health care. And like you're saying, I mean, now in this county we've gotten, you know, we have Wegmans, right. and we, <laughs> you know, but there's still more, right. you know, a lot more that we could do, mm -hmm. a lot more services right. in the county as well. Mm -hmm. And when you were growing up, did you really even think about those things? You know, it wasn't as apparent when I was very young um, of the issues that were going on completely in the county. Um, of course, I didn't travel all throughout the county like I do now, mm -hmm. uh, but um, I did notice, it, it started to kind of form in my mind that um, I think when I was kind of graduating from elementary school, going into middle school, that we don't have as many healthy options as I would like. Um, as other people in the community would, would talk about. Um, you know, a lot of people don't want McDonald's at every corner. Um, we don't want uh, fast food chains just all around the county. Right. We want healthy eating. We want organic foods. Um, you know, we want more of a Wegmans and, and so forth where we can, you know, go and, and buy clean and, and, and um, clean products and, and produce and everything else that you know, basically gives more to sustainable living. Um, we want a long longevity of life, um, right. a healthy longevity of life. Absolutely. So I think that's, those are things that I kind of started to be concerned about after, you know, I, I really had more knowledge about mm -hmm. um, the politics of the county and, and uh, what was accessible and, and really what was outside of my front door, right? When you open your front door, what do you see? Right, what's down the street from you? Is it a liquor store or, you know, is it something that will actually benefit you in life in the long run? And that's important mm. because we want to, like you said, we want to be, have something that is sustainable, mm -hmm. but also something for generations to come. Right. And if you don't have clean air, clean water, right. a good education, you know, those things, especially in minority communities, those things are really, um, you know, there's something that you really have to fight for. Right, right. Yeah, and so when you look at where you wanna go, mm -hmm. where is it that you wanna go? You know, when I think about it, I, I really just would like to concentrate on issues uh, that can really help um, residents, seniors, seniors especially, I, mm -hmm. I think our senior citizens, they have given so much to the county, right? They have laid the foundation for our county. Mm -hmm. I think it's instilled in all of us to make sure that we do what we can to make sure that we make live, their lives better. Right. Um, where I would like to go, just making sure that we take care of our citizens, of, of our current residents and, and uh, residents to come and so forth. I think um, we're on that track. I think you know the top leadership of the county, the county executive, is doing a great job. I think she's she has a great relationship with the county mm -hmm. council, um, and I think we are starting to really bring about those issues and, and talk about the issues, but also mm -hmm. find solutions to those issues because we could talk about issues all day long, right. but if we're not really implementing the solutions and making those hard decisions, nothing's really going to come about that. So. Just uh, concentrating on issues that can really, um, or solutions, I should say, solutions that can really help our county residents. That's really what I'm concentrating on right now. And that's, you know, Prince George's County has a wealth of, has a lot of wealth. It does. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and um, there are things that, you know, we want to do for the community. Mm -hmm. And there's the money to do that, mm -hmm. but there isn't always the support right. to do that. Right. And that's it's a lot. True. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. I think, you know, um, I think we're becoming better overall as a county at being more politically active. Mm -hmm. um, I think 
you know, when I was growing up, um, a lot of people mentioned a lot of apathy in the community, um, and, and mm -hmm. people would just let things go unchecked. You know, they wouldn't be really concerned about um, being part of their civic association or going to a county council hearing and, and so forth. I think um, that time has changed. I think, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're getting to the level where, you know, everyone, you know, from a young age to, you know, senior citizens are, are being more involved. Um, and I think mm -hmm. we need that because every voice matters, right? Um, mm -hmm. You and I can uh, agree that the county needs um, X, Y, and Z, uh, but we may want to go about it in a different way. But the, I think the important aspect of that is that we're both speaking our minds, mm -hmm. um, we're both concerned about an issue, and we're kind of, um, we're kind of in a space where we can both uh, be more productive about the the outcome of that, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what's needed. So I think you know there's there's less apathy in the community. I think people um, overall are getting more involved, and I think mm -hmm. that that's what's needed as well. And we have to get back to that each one teach, teach one, one. Mm -hmm. and you know it takes a village not just to raise a child but also to raise your community. Right, and. Um, I do agree with you that people are getting more involved because of the political climate that we're in. Right. So everyone has to stand up. They right. have to make a difference. They have to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, they have to volunteer mm -hmm. and just make a difference because politicians just can't do it right. by themselves. Right. You know, the community has to really um, support that. And so. Any last words about your, the program that you worked on in school, or we're going to talk about politics a, l a little bit later, uh -huh. but any encouragement? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, we're, we're on the right path. We're on mm -hmm. the right path, and I think every day we're making decisions um, that kind of lead us towards a better county. Um, at the end of the day, we have to make sure that we not only um, think about our neighbors, but the entirety of the county. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, when people talk about Prince George's County, they're talking about me, they're talking about you, they're talking right. about everyone that lives here. Uh, we have to make sure that we help each other. Um, I think we're on that path. We're, we're becoming more of a community, um, I like to say a community county, where we're just all one. Um, right. And I think that's the, the, the mindset that we need to have and we need to continue on. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid to knock on your neighbor's door. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. to get more involved. Um, and, and like you said, we're going to talk about politics a little later, but, you know, that's part of the job of the Prince George's County Democratic Central Committee, right? It's, it's a grassroots um, local committee that and, gets more people involved. And we're going to talk about that. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. So <laughs> you will, uh, we'll talk more with Chris Stevenson. And thank you for watching. And 